Good afternoon. Welcome to the Greenfield Public Schools School Committee meeting. It's Wednesday, September 14, 2022. It's 6 p.m. We're at the John's On Community Center, 35 Pleasant Street, and this meeting is being recorded by GCTV. We will move right into our agenda for the evening. Uh, Secretary Ekstrom, can I have a roll call and call to order, please? Of course. Member Deneve. Here. Secretary Ekstrom, I am here. Member Johnson Massad. Here. Member Martini. Here. Chair Proietti. Here. Member Wall, uh, Vice Chair Wall, sorry. Here. Mayor Wiedegardner. I assume is absent. The mayor is absent. No response. However, we do have a quorum. Thank you. And we're called to order at 6.01 p.m. Uh, let's do the approval of minutes. And if I could have a motion to approve the minutes as a consent item for both August 10 and August 24. So moved. Second. Was that Member uh, Denise? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any any discussion? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll go to a vote. Anyone opposed to passing the minutes? Anyone abstaining from passing the minutes? The minutes pass unanimously. And we will go to now item three, public comment. Uh, Susan Farber, do we have folks signed up for a public comment? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, we have uh, uh, business manager Paquette here and he has asked to uh, move up in the agenda, which um, we'd like to have a motion to move the um, budget update item seven to actually be item three. Uh, can I have a motion to that effect? So move. And a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion of that? Any concern? Okay, and, and we'll vote on that. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? That's opposed. Okay. A any okay. So that passes with one opposition. Um, Andy, budget update, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you have the update in your packet for July and August. Uh, not to be alarmed by the negatives, because as I've mentioned previously, uh, we spend the summer realigning things as grant information comes in, personnel changes, which again, there are substantial changes that have occurred and continue to occur. Uh, so we will be realigning those as we do uh, as normal process. Um, I can answer any questions that you might have regarding either the local budget or the revolving accounts. Any questions or comments for Andy? Secretary Ekstrom, go ahead. When you anticipate all that will be adjusted. So uh, Loretta had, the uh, payroll has sent me the most recent personnel changes. So this is where we're doing our line in the sand, okay. even though there are still continued personnel changes, primarily in the instructional aid area. So um, the goal is for the October meeting to have it all done and realigned for uh, public you know, sharing and potential revote of the budget. Okay. Uh, hearing that, I would expect or think that we'll probably do a budget meeting after the full school committee meeting, just to just to check in. Sure. Uh, in September or October? After the October meeting. Okay. Once everything's been aligned, then we can. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or discussion of the budget? Okay, seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burkett, for your time. Oh, I somehow turned on the light here, there we go. Okay, and so now we will go immediately into public comment. Um, Susan Farber, do we have public comment tonight? Please, come on up. We don't want to assume that you're making public comment just because you're here. We are highly entertaining. <laughs> So do you need to state your name and where you live? And you have three minutes. Go ahead. Hold on. So press it. No. There you go. So I am Sean Hoyt. I live at Silver Street here in Greenfield. Um, I have two children in the school system, both at Discovery School Four Corners. And full disclosure, my wife is also an employee of the Greenfield Public School System as an instructional assistant. Um, came to speak about two matters. One is budget. 
I know that UNC contract is still under negotiation, and I think a lot of the staffing problems could be solved if Green Folk could stand out a little more in how much they pay. Again, I know that IAs, are, compared to other cities, still are paid quite a bit less, and if you can make a 10% pay bump for going to Shelburne or going to Turner's, of course they're gonna do it. Um, I can't really blame them for doing it, but we need IAs in our schools, especially for our SPED kids. My son is an IEP student, he needs help, and too many times there's not somebody there to help him because we simply don't have the staff. Um, that's quick, that's easy. The harder thing I wanna talk about tonight is the, um, what's the word? The consultant that came in this past summer to talk about what we need to do about our elementary schools, how Discovery School is bursting at the seams and the other schools are not as full. Um, I think the only option is the first one, which is changing our elementary schools to be K-1, 2, 3, 4, 5, bringing the fifth grade back into the elementary schools. I know I, like many other parents, are unhappy with the fact that my fourth grader will be at the middle school next year, and I will probably choice him out of Greenfield if I have no other choice. I don't want to do that. I like Greenfield. I would like to keep him here in the Greenfield public school system. But if fifth grade remains at the middle school, I feel I have no choice to protect him to move him somewhere else. And I know a lot of other parents feel that way, and I feel that's unfortunate because here in Greenfield, I think we need to grow the community more. And I think having the elementary schools for the entire town being K-1, it mixes the whole town together at a much earlier and younger age. It allows those friendships to develop in the beginning. I know when I was in Northampton schools, it was hard going from our neighborhood elementary schools to the JFK to the high school where suddenly we're mixing with a lot of people from all over the town that we don't know and cliques formed where it was the Bridge Street kids, it was the Leeds kids, it was the Jackson Street kids and that was hard to break but if we start them young, if we have the whole town mixed from the beginning, I think it'll be a better sense of community overall and I think any kind of trying to redraw the lines to avoid redlining just creates other problems. I think it's the simplest and cleanest solution that will have the best outcome for Greenfield Public Schools. And I know that there has been talk about public comment, but I haven't seen anything happen yet about that. I know that the start of the school year is crazy. There's a lot of staff transition, but I feel like it's important to get that started as soon as possible so that the public comment can happen, the planning can happen, and hopefully we can see that transition happen because I feel like it's important. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And I was just gonna say stand by for an update. We're not, it's, it's not normal to comment on public comment, but I think the answer to your question will come out in tonight's meeting. I, Thank you. Perhaps, Member Wall, we could be conscious of ensuring that he receives an email for discussion about that. All right, let's move on. Um, any other public comment? I'm not seeing any. Okay. We have Shane here to give his the report of the student representatives to the school committee. Welcome back. How was your summer? Uh, it was great. It was quite busy, but it was it was nice to have a bit of a break. So, Excellent. Um, Go just, ahead. Out of the way, I'm sorry about um, if this is a bit of a rough process. I didn't have a great transition period, but I will do my absolute best. We know you will. Um, so to start off with student council, um, student council is off to a great start this year. We helped out with the meet and greet in the beginning of the year. We held an e-board training, ran a bonding, and we'll be holding class officer elections tomorrow. Homecoming is the first Saturday of October, and we will be helping with the Green River cleanup in a few weeks. Um, in terms of athletics, Green Wave Athletics is off to a great start. As of this writing, which I'm assuming is a few days ago, field hockey was one-to-one -one and boys golf is one-to-one. -one. Boys co cross country is also one-to-one -one and girls cross country is zero to two. Boys soccer and girls soccer and girls volleyball have had two games as of this meeting and football has had one. Uh, all schedules can be found on arbiterlive.com and we would love to see anyone at a game or two. Uh, for Key Club, GHS Key Club held its first meeting on Thursday, September 1st, and will meet each Thursday after school until 2.30 throughout the year. In September, we will be conducting a campus-wide cleanup in October. We hope to bring back the Youth Sports Clinic. In November, we will be participating in the, in the United Way reading program and conducting the annual turkey trot. 
The first art club meeting of the year will be held on Monday, October 3rd from 2.15 to uh, 3.30 in Mr. Green's room, which is 2007. Anyone with an interest in art and creativity is welcome to attend. In art club, you are free to work on whatever creative project you would like, but we also will have individual and group projects for those who would like um, some direction. Art club is a great place to hang out with others who share a love for art, get creative and inspired, make friends, and have fun making cool stuff. Uh, Library club had their first meeting yesterday where they elected their new officers for the year and have started to plan the GHS Comic Con. The first Spanish club meeting of the year will be held on Thursday, September 15th at 2.15 in Ms. Cloutier's room. All are welcome to attend. Please come hear about exciting activities planned for the school year, including a trip to Puerto Rico coming in April vacation. The French Club will hold its meeting on Monday, September 12th, which was this Monday, at 2.15 p.m. We are excited to welcome new members and look forward to seeing many social events, as well as Coffee House, Taste of World Cultures, and our April trip to Quebec. Um, an enrollment meeting for the trip will be held in the GHS Lecture Hall on Google Meet uh, on Tuesday, September 13th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., which again was yesterday. Uh, Spectrum will hold its first meeting on Thursday, September 15th at 2.30, and we always welcome new members who would like to work on LGBTQ plus activism and or hang out in a safe place after school. Band performed in the um, fair parade last week. They are beginning the start of their field show and stand tunes for our first home game on the 30th, which is also homecoming. Uh, the band students chose ABBA for their performance this year. Mr. Sipek is splitting his time between GHS and GMS. He is also at the high school for period one band. Choruses, the chorus and other music classes are not currently offered at Greenfield High School. The first NHS meeting of the year will be held on Wednesday, September 14th at 2.15 in the room 2023. Plans for the induction of new members and service projects will be discussed. Um, for eSports, our two fall eSports teams um, are Rocket League and Splatoon 3, which will begin their preseasons on the week of Monday, September 12th. Any student who is interested in participating can join even if they don't own any of these games. We're currently looking for students who would be interested in streaming our matches with some play-by-play -play commentary, and we are open to creating teams for other games that are supported by our league, such as Madden 23, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, um, and Gamesmithing, our tabletop gaming club, will begin in early October and will feature several D&D several campaigns and also many new indie board games and student-created games. Um, finally, we're just going to go over some student voice stuff. So um, on August 31st, we marked the first day of school for GHS students, beginning with a half day to kick things off. We began with getting accustomed to the transition into a structured environment once again and preparing for courses to begin, and I've spent most of the days since that time getting accustomed to the workload. In our next few days, um, class officer elections will take place where each grade will gather in the auditorium individually to hear candidate speeches. They will vote for their class president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and class rep. Immediately after the speeches are given, um, votes will take place. Class officers will begin to meet after elections and begin to plan their own various events and larger group events, such as the lip sync. Um, yesterday, September 13th, the Yonder phone pouches were implemented for students. Students were issued individual pouches at the start of the day, which they will keep for the remainder of the time the system is in place. Students are expected to keep their phones in the pouch all day and then lock it at one of the two unlocking stations at the end of the day, which was moved to 2.15 to compensate for the time it takes to unlock every individual phone. In regards to student response, the pouches appear to be causing a greater disruption than intended. Many students do seem to be upset about the new guidelines put in place and have either vocally or physically, in the form of attempting to open the pouches, express, expressed a disagreement in how the system is being handled. It is widely understood that the use of phones during class has been an issue, but many have di um, displayed a strong preference in searching for a new option. Thank you, that is all that I have. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Shane. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll move on. Thanks again. We are on to the reports from the administration. Uh, ASKP, Super, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, Karen Patnode, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, short and sweet tonight, I wanted to give you an update of our professional development that 
Uh, we started the year off on August 29th and 30th for teacher opening PD days. You'll see that we're rolling out the CKLA Amplify uh, curriculum in English that we adopted last year. I had the pleasure of being at Newton today and visiting classrooms and seeing teachers implementing it and just really impressed with our Unit A staff members and all they've undertook to get this out into their classrooms. They're doing a phenomenal job as always and just really, really excited to see our students engaged in high quality grade level standards based materials. So it was a great, a great opening week on that. Um, I was a former classroom teacher though and really do appreciate that continued PD and support of teachers is what they need in order for anything to be a success. So I am planning some additional follow-ups and all of these for our November 8th day, and I'm talking with the companies to come back in January, and then hopefully a follow-up in May. We really want this um, first year to be supportive and really encouraging for our teachers that if they have questions, the company has been phenomenal in answering emails and getting back to us, and teachers are welcome to reach out to them at any time, they said. But it's really been nice, even at collaborations, for teachers to be able to talk about the materials via grade level and really just problem solve some of the kinks as always of rolling out something new that's occurred so very excited about that our new math program also um, started in the middle school illustrative math and we have a new title one math interventionist that has joined with much illustrative math experience from her time in Springfield so it's been really great to have her be able to support the math rollout at that level as well um, the library news and update, we are very pleased to welcome a middle school and elementary librarian, Laura Luker and Jessica Morris, join us on staff. Um, we are continuing to just finish up a weeding project at the Discovery School, so that library will be weeded as well as the other two elementaries. We've ordered new books for the collections, and um, it was lovely at 3.30, my phone dinged, and Ms. Halpin, the interim principal at Federal Street, sent me a photo of students at Federal Street who were able to go to Federal Street Library today and check out books. And these little faces with brand new books in their hands getting on the bus, she said they couldn't even concentrate in dismissal line because they were so excited. So um, really, really excited that that project has taken off and our students are getting what they deserve in terms of access to literacy. Uh, mentors, we trained seven new staff members um, this summer to become new mentors for our new teachers in district. So we now have a pool of 25 district mentors um, in all sorts of content areas, which is really nice to be able to have to support our new staff. And I am very excited to mentor Michelle Fenimore and Darlene Rehor this year, the principal at the middle school and Newton. So it's been nice uh, being able to guide and help them out as well. And then lastly, with grants, we just, Christine and I, put the finishing touches on the Title I ESSA grant and submitted it. The deadline was yesterday, so we await word of um, approval. And we did recently finally get our approval and funds for the civics grant for grades 8 through 12. So I'll be working with the high school history department on the fund use for that grant and what we can do in terms of civic engagement. So very excited about that as well. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions, discussion? Member Martina, are you shaking your head? No questions? I have a question, but I'm not certain if it's better for the superintendent, so I figure I would just wait. Oh, okay. Uh, Secretary Ekstrom? I am so thankful. Really, just, I am so thankful for everything that has been happening and for everything that you're overseeing, it just, it's, I'm so thankful. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, ASKP. We'll move on to the report from the superintendent. Okay, first I'd like to highlight two things that I forgot to talk about when I was doing my written report, but that are um, exciting. Um, first of all, during the first few days of school, I believe that I had shared with you at the last meeting that we were doing work creating our social emotional learning curriculum. And during visits to the middle school, I was able to see some of those lessons actually being taught in the classrooms 
and um, there was very good participation from the students and the teachers, everyone was engaged. And then Glenn Franklin, our equity coordinator, also shared that he saw the same at the high school. So we've had um, a good start with that work, which will continue, of course, but I wanted to share that that's moving into the classrooms at this stage. Um, right now, our MCAS data is embargoed, meaning that schools Karen and I see some of the raw data, but we're not able to publish it at this stage. We were told by the commissioner that it should be available toward the end of September. So if that holds true, we should be able to give a presentation to you folks at the October meeting about last year's MCAS data. Um, if the uh, public release of the data is delayed, then that certain, you know, could impact our presentation date, but we're hoping that we'd be able to do that for October. Um, so staffing, we did hire a new associate principal at the high school. Christina Huff, who was with us last year, um, got a principal's job in a Springfield school, so we're very happy for her. And um, Paula Bro will be joining us in about a week. She had to give notice, so um, she's coming on board. And Melissa Bednarski, who worked in the district prior as a building nurse, is with us as our full-time nurse leader. We're very excited about that. And she will be providing some updates for families that you'll see either in my parent updates weekly or in the principal's updates, the newsletters to families um, monthly. So we'll be sharing her information out. But there's a lot of, a lot of pieces that she's still investigating and um, getting updated on since she just started this week, but well, a week ago. Um, Karen and I are helping out the principals by scheduling and doing all the IA and substitute teacher and substitute IA interviews. Um, we were able to hire at least four people last week, um, add on staff, and we have more scheduled. We're really focusing on getting our instructional assistants in. We do agree that they're absolutely critical positions, and um, we've been very lucky to have some very qualified staff join us this past week. So, um, so that's feeling positively about that. But I'd like to acknowledge that all of the staff is being very flexible and collaborative in covering absences of other people and um, tag teaming to take care of where we have open positions. So that is recognized and greatly appreciated. Um, related to collaboration and being flexible. Andrea, who is um, at the reception desk at central office, is also currently serving as our registrar because our registrar is covering a long-term sub position at Federal Street School. So we're all um, pitching in to make sure we're covering. So, um, but Andrea and Sierra are still working together even though Sierra's in a classroom by day. She's helping by evening. Um, this year, we are pleased to share we're going to be um, piloting the elementary open house. I know that was available a few years ago, and um, we'd like to see if that's something that families are interested in. We know that the meet and greet is something that is barely, you know, people participate in the meet and greet, but one thing that is missed in that opportunity is the ability for families to see the classroom set up and really what their learning space looks like because as of the evening of meet and greet, teachers have spent all of the time that they're back doing professional development. So um, I think it's important that families realize that staff has not had the opportunity to get their room instruction ready by meet and greet and that um, by open house, things should look much more typical for the instructional day. So we'll see um, how many people um, choose to participate in open house and then um, we'll see how we'd like to move forward with that in the future. But, and then um, a reminder, middle school and high school open houses are both October 6th. That's on the district calendar and I know more information will go home from both of those principals. So um, I found it interesting to hear Shane's report on the cell phone pouches because that um, objectively is a little bit different than what all of the building administration is sharing. And um, 
I had the opportunity to be at the high school this afternoon to help unlock pouches at dismissal. And I can tell you 100% every student that walked by Derek and I who were out front were polite and cordial and laughing with us when, um, you know, we had challenges getting some of the magnets undone and um, racing a little bit. Mr. Morrison beat me on um, unlocking pouches. But, um, you know, we, we have seen um, extremely cooperative students. Everyone was reported to have participated in it. Um, this program we recognize is new. We also know that some of our students are having a hard time not having their phones. And um, we are working with students, giving them access to our counselors, having the administrators talk with them, um, making sure that they know where they can get to phones, if they need to contact families. When I was in the office this afternoon, um, there were at least two students who came down and very politely asked if they could use a phone to call their families, which they did. So um, I absolutely agree. There's gonna be a transition period and I'm sure that there are students who would prefer to have their phones, but they were all um, cooperative. And I will say yonder, the representatives who were there working with us these past two days at the high school shared that our rollout at Greenfield High School was the best that they've done anywhere. Um, we had a compliance rate of 89% this morning, and I can tell you what that means. Um, as Shane said, everybody gets their pouch. We had students um, have time to write on them. They could draw a picture on them if they wanted to. Um, and then day two, when you know, we asked them obviously to bring the pouch back. So we had 89% of students came back with their pouch in full functioning order, powered down their phones, put their pouch in, locked it up and went to class. Of the 11% of students who didn't, 13 of those students had forgotten their pouches at home. And then we had 46 that had some level of damage, but um, in prepping for today, the representatives from the company actually expected that we would have about 70 that had damage based on their experience and percentages. So we were very pleased and most of the damage looks like it could be from students fiddling with it instead of like, you know, taking an electric saw to it or anything like that. Um, the pins are able to be bent somewhat, which makes it not functional. So students were given a new pouch and, um, and then we'll come back tomorrow and try it. I will tell you, I have received already one staff email talking about how excited that students are talking to each other. And Derek reported um, yesterday that he had several students come up to him and tell them that they liked the pouches because they're talking to students they haven't talked to um, since school started because now they don't have something to distract them. So I think it is not a surprise to me to hear that some students would prefer not, um, but we're underway. The startup was positive from our perspective and um, I did include some data that I think is a reasonable way for us to look at measuring the success um, and that we talked about, we think that cell phones are distracting. We think that um, it's, we need students to engage more in the classrooms. Um, objectively, however, there aren't a ton of data sets to help us support that. So what I did do was look at last year's um, discipline data at both the middle school and the high school. And one thing I will tell you is I picked particular um, their, you know, offenses as, as they're identified by the Department of Ed for reporting. Um, and at the high school, we're going to look at the numbers of students written up for skipping class and tardies because the belief there is that students are, were in hallways or um, gathering in the bathrooms. We heard quite a bit of conversation last year about issues happening in the restrooms at the high school. So, um, you know, 
felt like an objective measure of some improvement would be reducing the number of write-ups for skipping class and tardies at the high school. And then at the middle school, um, disorderly conduct and insubordination were the prime um, disciplinary set, um, write-ups that I saw. And um, so I'm, I set goals of decreasing both of those by 25% this upcoming school year. And certainly we'll have subjective feedback um, as we go through the year, but you know we need to have some objective measure as well. So that's what I identified. I think it's fair to have us expect to see an improvement in those areas. Um, capital projects. So our water bottle filling stations, you folks who were able to tour the buildings saw that it's, especially at the middle school, we had open spaces on the walls. Um, Eric is moving along with those. He's been working with the building inspector just to make sure that the way we wanna set up the units is compliant with ADA. So our building inspector is working with a state agency um, and we're expecting a follow up anytime so that we can continue those. One thing I'm very excited about is that um, my office, Amy, and the mayor's office are working collaborati collaboratively to see if we can fund the phone upgrade and replacement project that I had talked to the committee about previously, that some of our buildings, the phone system, not the hand units, but the sort of the brains of the phone system need to be upgraded so that we are compliant with two federal laws. S Two of our buildings and Green River um, need to have phone system replacements, and the approximate cost of that project is 150,000. So what we did, um, myself, Andy, Eric, met with the mayor, Amy, Danny Letourneau, and we are looking at all of the previously funded capital projects for the schools, going back to FY17, and determining whether or not those projects are completely finished. And then um, Amy and I will be going to city council in October to ask if they will rescind those remaining funds and reallocate the funds so that we can use it to pay for the phone um, upgrade and replacement project. There are a few questions that um, we're ironing out about funding sources to make sure we can um, utilize all of it that's still there un unexpended. Um, but I believe we'll be right about where we need to to take care of the phones. So I think it's a nice opportunity to utilize funds that have already been identified and take care of a project that we didn't know was gonna be needed um, last year when we asked for the capital. So. I think it's also a nice um, collaborative effort, so I'm pleased about that. We have instituted our automated absence calls. Um, all of our buildings are getting them in the morning, approximately the same time, and um, we want to make sure that those calls go out to anyone who is not in the building for whom we have not gotten a parent or guardian notification. So. Um, it's really important that our students are in school. Even the excused absences, which we know are unavoidable, but that's still time away from instruction. So we really want to work with families if they're having a challenge with attendance. And um, Glenn, for one, is um, happy to look at doing home visits if that would help um, families facilitate attendance for their students so our counselors our nurses our administrators are all very willing and looking forward to having conversations so the re-envisioning our school um, facilities that's that's our fancy name right now I guess that's what I'm calling it but we do have some dates for those um, meetings and as a reminder for everybody it's to talk about addressing several topics which the goals of the work would be to provide equitable access to educational services and resources to all students, to consider moving grade five back to the elementary school, um, to consider options for the use of Green River School, and another topic that is connected um, or able to be discussed along with these is consideration for changing the start times to a later time for secondary students, which I know was something um, 
brought up by the committee. So at this point, we have four dates that have been solidly identified. Um, all of these will be published for parents tomorrow in my parent update. They'll be on the website. They'll be sent out in school-based um, newsletters. So um, this will be available. October 11th at 5 p.m. at Greenfield High School. October 13th at 1 o'clock in the community room at Leiden Woods. October 20th at 5.30 in the community room at Oak Courts. And October 25th at 6 p.m. at Federal Street School. I am waiting for one more confirmation of a time, which I will add to the list when I send it out to parents. And, um, oh, Greenfield Gardens. I said that we're pending the confirmation on a date. Um, transportation can be provided for the meetings for um, families held at the high school and at Federal Street School. I'll include ways for them to sign up when I publish the information. And I have reached out to the student council at the high school to see if they can arrange for child care at Federal Street and the high school. So we're looking forward to sharing information, to talking about options. Um, hard copies of the whole report are available in my office. If anybody would like one, they can just contact um, my administrative assistant, Lauren, and we can get those out to you. And um, we will be creating a um, digestible summary of options that we'll bring with us to the community meetings so that people can look through those. So I hope that's helpful. Good. Okay. And then, last but not least, strategic planning. So that has started in the background right now. Um, the folks from TMS who were contracted to do this work have started getting some um, data from the district. And President Gilmore from the City Council will be um, asking for a volunteer from the City Council to participate. Um, Jean has been asked to participate in the work. And um, I will be asking for representatives from each of the collective bargaining units if any of them would like to sit on the committee as well. And then we will be advertising for parent and community representatives to participate. So all of that communication is getting um, formulated right now. I did have a meeting where all of the collective bargaining units were invited to come and review the report and talk about options. Um, representatives from Unit A, our teachers union, um, our administrative assistance union, and our transportation union were there. And um, you know, I can, in general, summarize to that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Ann, but basically talked about the um, redistricting to be by grade band they felt would be a reasonable option. But, you know, we include that information along with all the other feedback. You know, of course, transportation did rightly bring up that if we reconfigure schools in any way, um, start times and transportation routes would need to be considered, of course. Um, between Kismeskis bus and Jake Waldsmith, our transportation coordinator, he has access to the um, bus routing software. So I'm confident between Jake and Kismeskis, we'd be able to um, work with that when and if the time comes. And Judy, Dr. Judy Hool, she will be here for the October meeting to provide an update and an overview of the whole strategic planning process. Covered, that's it. Thank you. Uh, discussion or comments, questions from the school committee, please. Member Dini, go ahead. I was just curious about the October 13th meeting, Thursday at 1 p.m. I know it's hard to get everyone. I, I know it's crazy. But 1 p.m. on a Thursday seems like it might not be a good choice for parents. Was there no other option? Actually, the representative, the manager from Leiden Woods, is the one who asked for a daytime really? appointment. Okay. Yes. The thinking was that more families would participate if their children were in school and that they would be free to participate without distraction of their families or worrying about evening activities. So they actually requested it. Okay, oh, that's interesting. I'm glad that you, that you said that. Um, so if on that meeting 
say it's not very well attended, would it be possible in the future to do another one if, you know, if any of these meetings are not, is this it? Or are we well, right now them? this is it because we had wanted to, I think, um, first let me say, we can schedule however the subcommittee wants. Mm -hmm. um, I know the desire was to get this information out to the community pretty early, so we targeted getting them done before the end of October. Um, that would certainly be up to you folks about if you want to do any others. Mm -hmm. But I think um, the five, I, I know we'll hear back from um, Greenfield Gardens. She's been very mm -hmm. communicative, just wasn't in the office. Um, I think, you know, seeing how many people come to the five mm -hmm. might be a yeah. good gauge. And then whatever you folks would like, we could reach back out if the need be. Okay, I was just curious what the rationale was. So thank you for clarifying. Yeah. And it was good that some of you were able to be there at that time. So um, yeah, that, are they going to be um, done in an hour? Is it an hour budgeted? I'm just trying to make. I'm trying to make all of them, you guys. <laughs> I somewhat thought it, about okay. an hour would okay. be the time. Um, okay, I'm going to try, even if I might have to scoot out. Yeah, you know, I think thirty so. minutes in. <laughs> and then either Karen. Thank you. Sure, and either Karen or I will be at each of them. So. Other questions, comments? Member Johnson Musa, go ahead. Uh, I was part of the group that reviewed the contracts um, for the, uh, or the proposals for the strategic planning, and um, I noted that TMS was planning to have Dr. Judy Houle, former interim superintendent, um, kind of lead through the process, and I see that she'll be providing the overview. So is the plan still for Dr. Hull to kind of overall lead that process, or? I believe at this point she will be facilitating the discussions. Um, you know, just a reminder for the committee, it's, it's the work of the Strategic Planning Committee. The facilitators don't create any of the goals. Yeah. But as far as I know, Judy is the one who's sort of the front of the um, planning, the facilitating group. Okay, thank you. Member Martini, you look like you have a question or a comment. I do, and it's Go the ahead. question that I had saved from earlier, and yes. the superintendent started off talking about data, which is perfect. Okay. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. All right, what is the question? Uh, so. Over the past few months, we've been talking quite a bit about these curriculum shifts that um, the district is making, and um, I think it's really important for this committee and for the town in general to have a understanding of where we've been and where we're at and where we're hoping to get in terms of student outcomes. So I was going to ask you if you could distill some of the data about that um, at the next meeting maybe. Yes. Um, last month um, I had asked Karen about the uh, different forms of assessment the district is using presently to assess literacy uh, among students and I think it would be really great um, if we could have that broken down for us. Yeah. It, um, yes, absolutely, we will. Um, we haven't finished any of the testing at this point. Um, we will have map data, Dibbles data, we'll have the curriculum resource related assessments, and then of course, um, MCAS. So I think when we, you know, my goal would be to um, give the overview first, the broad, and then as we go through the year, talk about what we see in terms of, of change. Um, generally, we would not necessarily expect MCAS level change after one year of a new program. It takes time for students to really integrate the new skills they're learning. And so, um, Kate, I know you know this, but um, so really looking at different data sources and which ones are classroom-based, interim, and then summative, which is the MCAS. So um, one thing that I was very excited, I got to participate with Karen today um, and Kim in a um, 
reading intervention discussion where we're talking about the um, dyslexia screening, which is a requirement through DESI, and what tools we have and how to use those. So you will have lots of data coming up. Great. And you just led into the little part B that I had with that, uh, which is that we've, I had also um, inquired before about what the next steps were, what the district is planning for um, certain students, including uh, older students who will not have gotten the benefit of the evidence-based um, curricula yeah. that we're now going to be using and what we're planning to do for tier two and three intervention and um, what the plans are for students in special education in particular. And um, all of that has been kind of a, a work in progress because this is a huge Titanic kind of project. Yes. <laughs> um, it would be really great if we could um, have some of that information as well integrated into this discussion about data yep. so that we can really understand what the big picture is here. So I think, yes, we can. Short answer. Long answer is that you just referenced it's a titanic effort. And we really, we know we need to address students at all three levels, all three tiers. We've talked before multiple times about the you know, um, mass tiered system of support triangle, RTI triangle is the same thing. Um, and right now the district does not have the desired triangle. We might be a little rectangly, we could be an upside down triangle in some places. So we really need to work on core instruction first one of the important things we need to do is look at what that data is telling us about where our tiered needs are. Um, we have thoughts about that, and our interventionists are doing additional assessment, and that's going to help us identify those needs. But right now, what we're seeing on the front end is that we have a disproportionate number of students needing intervention because that can happen when you are working toward getting a consistent, you know, high quality resource in place and having um, everyone teaching basically the same scope and sequence because we want all of our students to get, to get to the next grade level with the same set of skills and having the same experience. So we're working on identifying the gaps that we need to address. We do have some intervention resources that exist in the district that are their quality um, resources. What we don't know is if the students who in, are in intervention respond wholly to those or if they will show splinter areas of need that we then need to identify a different resource to support. So it's an, you know this, um, it's an extremely complicated, multi-layered process to have these discussions, but we are. Um, what I can tell you in terms of our special education programs, our staff has gotten specialized training in some of the Linda Mood Bell programs, Seeing Stars specifically, which is a research-based, language-based, explicit reading program. So that's a good foundation. Again, will every student respond to that? Likely not, but we have to at least start all with one foundation and some solid training and then move in different directions based on what individual students present with. Um, we've also restructured our transitions programs, which are for students with um, social, emotional, and behavioral needs at the level requiring specialized programming. So we're pleased with the way that has started for the year with the higher, um, different structures for support. So um, we've changed the scheduling of special education services at the middle school and we'll see if that supports our students in a way that they need. So a lot of moving parts, and what I will say is when we see the improvement we're looking for, because we will see the improvement, um, I, we will never be able to tell which piece. It's gonna be multiple pieces that are moving at one time, and they'll all have some impact on the direction of our assessment data. So, but we can't wait to see which one does it. You know, do we do five years of doing CKLA and then see how it works? 
yes, but we have to do these other things at the same time. So you're going to be awash with data. Can't wait. I know. And you're always <laughs> so ready to talk about these things when I ask you these questions. So yes. thank you. This is, this is good. It's exciting <laughs> stuff. I yes, love this. Absolutely. It's important, but we just have to finish the assessments first. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I think that will be really um, fascinating and really informative, hopefully, for um, especially parents in the district. Um, it doesn't surprise me, really, to hear that we might have an upside-down triangle going on because you can't really intervene your way out of a Tier 1 problem. Um, could you just very briefly explain for folks who don't know, understand what that is? Because that's a whole bunch of RTI lingo that yeah. we just <laughs> gobbledygook back yeah. and forth. So you want a, a basic explanation of the triangle? Nutshell for some parent who's watching, scratching their head. Absolutely. Going, I've never heard what of is this triangle? Absolutely. So um, research, including um, and agencies, including the Department of Education, often envision the way we provide supports for students as a triangle. And that triangle is generally green at the bottom, yellow in the middle, red at the very top. And what that represents is the bottom, the foundation of our work, should be able to address the needs of approximately 80% of our students with strong core classroom instruction. That's social, emotional, and academic. The yellow section represents students who need some additional support to um, meet their instructional or social, emotional, behavioral um, benchmarks. And that generally is thought about as about 15%, 10, 10 12, 15% of our students might need a little bit. And we call those students needing tier two support. And then the tippity top of the triangle is usually in red, meaning those students need the most support. It's approximately five to 7% of the population, depending on the other numbers. And those are the students who need the most intense support. Some models of the triangle suggest special education is in the red. I generally envision the triangle with special education um, as the star on the triangle, that it's after that tier three support. And the levels of support become more individualized and more intense and often more frequent as you go up the levels on the triangle. So when we talk about that, it's how much support, how much extra support, and for how long. Perfect. Thank you very okay. much. Sure. Other questions and comments from the school committee? All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Christine. And we are on to the school committee reports. I just have a brief update regarding the superintendent evaluation that I know not all of our uh, school committee members have heard. There is um, an unfortunate additional delay in that because um, my life personally has been a little chaotic over the past, since our last meeting. And uh, I actually accidentally recycled three of the evaluations, um, yeah, and only mine did not have an extra copy because I didn't think to make a copy of something I was given to myself. But I did talk to affected individuals. I just have not had a time to synthesize everything. We will do that in October. Um, in addition to in October, we will set the superintendent's goals for this academic year at the same time. So we'll do the evaluation and also do the goals so that we're on track for next year. Um, as I've been saying, it can only get better next year. Um, and so I want to apologize to everyone for that. It was an honest mistake. I didn't realize until like four days after the recycling had left the curb that that is where I'm sure it ended up. So that it is what it is at this point. Um, and that is my report. And I think we probably have subcommittee reports from policy and also perhaps from um, the redistricting. Do you, you're good with what we've already talked about. Great. So, uh, Glenn, I would pass it over to you for your report from policy. Great. Uh, we had a policy meeting, and um, the items of most interest to the full committee, I think, are um, we had a meeting with Liz LaFont from Massachusetts Association for School Committees to check in about our overall process of overhauling our policies and bringing them in line with best practices using um, 
many of the, the model policies um, from MASK as a starting point. And I think it was useful for all of us to get that orientation. Um, the ultimate goal will be to have our policies and our handbooks available online in a searchable uh, place that MASK will host. We will pay them to put that up there and then a, a smaller fee to maintain it going forward. Um, so that will be a re really useful tool for us once we're done with the full overhaul, which we're continuing to make progress on. We have the second reading of the um, sections E and F for you tonight. Um, and uh, the superintendent is working on other sections that most affect her uh, and her, and she has most knowledge about. She'll bring them to us for the first reading. There will be chances for folks to give feedback and we'll have a policy committee before we bring it back to you for the second meeting. So that process is continuing along. Um, related to the um, cell phones issue, the superintendent ha operated essentially from our handbooks um, in terms of uh, looking for guidance about what the school committee thinks about cell phones in general. <laughs> and I think the general, the message in the handbooks, which I think will end up being our message, which is that cell phones are not conducive to, to learning and they we need to have a policy not to have them but we are going to uh, have a process to develop that policy and um, I gathered input from the subcommittee I uh, will be drafting something we're going to have a public meeting in the evening which will be a sandwich of public comment where we'll have a public comment at the beginning of the meeting at 6 p.m we'll uh, discuss the uh, policy as a subcommittee, and then we'll have another public comment period. Um, we will not be making any final decisions at that meeting, and that's scheduled quite a far in advance in order to uh, accommodate calendars. I don't have the date right in front of me at the moment. I can pull that up, but um, we're looking forward to continuing that work. And I think that's... That's all the things that are probably most relevant to the full committee tonight. Thank you, Member Johnson Musan. I, I do want to say something about the uh, redistricting. I've forgotten the fancy name for it. <laughs> I think we settled on re envisioning our school facilities. That is I correct. I, I, I just forgot. But I wanted to alert people to the fact that when you come to the meetings, these will be very different meetings in that you will be allowed to speak and tell us what you think and ask us questions. So come prepared to participate in the meeting instead of just sitting on the sidelines watching because we really do want everybody to have an opportunity to tell us exactly what they envision for their children in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Member Denise. I just wanted to let you guys know that the collaborative is starting up next week. So that will be monthly. Thank you. And I don't, I don't know when I'll have a report, but I'm going. So I'll I bet you you're going to have one in October. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Exter. Um, I just, Member Johnson Massad, I just want to point out, and, and only because you had mentioned that you were going to have public comment at the beginning at the end, which I personally don't have an issue with. However, when you make a change to the way that a subcommittee functions and how the agenda is run, you have to ensure that it is the same as how all other subcommittees are run. And that is part of our policy. So I'm, I just want to make that clear to everyone that we do have a policy that exists and leave it at that. I, and again, I have no issue personally but that isn't how our policy is written. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you all for your feedback. <laughs> okay, uh, anything else on from the school committee as far as reports? And thank you for the uh, impromptu ones too. That was helpful. Nothing else. Okay, uh, we've already done the budget update, so we're on to item eight, the vote to declare uh, surplus items, outdated math and reading curriculum materials. Um, I think 
we can, well, I think we can do this as a, as a consent item. Um, or I also, I'm just looking at my notes here. Sorry for the delay. I did write a, a recommended motion um, as a consent item to put them together based on the compiled three different inventory lists. And I'm happy to take them separately if people would prefer. But I would look for a motion at this time that speaks to um, declaring as surplus the math and reading curriculum materials as listed on the Pearson Reading Street inventory list, also the Pearson Math inventory list, and the miscellaneous surplus materials document that are included with the materials for this meeting tonight. Anyone want to make that motion? Uh, or a different one? Uh, so moved. Can I just say so moved? Yes, you can. You always can. Yes. Okay, I'll go with second. Okay, there we go. <laughs> And any discussion of any of the three inventory lists, the items on them? I'm hearing no discussion. So let's move to a vote. All those opposed to uh, the um, declaring these as surplus? Anyone abstaining? So that passes unanimously. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, and we are on to the self-evaluation. Um, so the full document, this is the school committee evaluating itself and its work. Um, the full document is included in tonight's materials. I'm apologizing. I neglected to apologize ahead of time for two things. I haven't had a haircut in a while. I apologize for that. And also my voice, I have really bad allergies and they're, it, it's really raspy, I'm sorry. Um, but let's go on. The self-evaluation we did over the past couple of months, it was administered by MASC, that's the professional organization that supports school committees in Massachusetts. Um, we plan to have this be an annual process we'll do um, in the summer. That's already going to be um, a given for the upcoming years. Um, a little detail on what, uh, we, what the outcome was with the self-evaluation. Six of the seven, School committee members did participate. Um, the written comments are included with the slides and the, the scale, the bar graph. Um, I, I, I was informed by Liz LaFont, who actually administered it for us, that uh, the comments were mainly from three of the school committee members. I do not know who wrote the comments. I honestly don't even remember which comments were mine for some of them. Um, but it, it, there was a suggestion from Liz that it's not really representative because there were so few comments that were given. Um, and she said, maybe you just want to include only the bar graph and not the, the comments themselves. But that just really didn't seem right to me. I think it's important to include everything that was uh, supplied. We can learn from all of it. Um, the only thing that I did do was there were a handful of comments that referred to the work product of the superintendent, which was outside of the scope of this evaluation. And also there was one comment that referred to executive session, um, which is not public information. And so those comments, as little as possible, was adjusted. Um, and I did review those with Liz LaFond um, after the revision. Um, and so it, it is a long survey. It's available for everyone. Hopefully the school committee members have taken a look at it ahead of time. And I really would just at this point open it up for any comments um, from the full school committee about the process or um, what we see in summary or any of it that you would want to discuss. Uh, Secretary Ekstrom, please go ahead. Um, so I did take some time to go through everything and there were just some things that I did want to address a little bit. Um, there was a comment about a communications consultant. We actually do not have a communications consultant. I can't, rem I can't find it, of course, right here. Um, so with- I do uh, remember that comment. Yeah. Um, and I, I had, another member had commented that someone hadn't attended the Massey school committee attender or school committee member orientation. I'm not aware of that and we have to report all of that to city council or city clerk? 
clerk of courts. I, can't, I forget where her title is. The city and clerk. If, uh, it, yeah, city and clerk. And if that doesn't happen, that comes to us and so that we can poke and prod and say you need to go do that. And I've never, I haven't, I don't believe that I've, I haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything? That Our members are in compliance with the MASA training. Okay. Um, and the and um, the last thing that I was sort of curious about is is comments about the agenda. Um, is that Amy is or the chair? Excuse me, is the only person who who sets the agenda, and it's actually set by the chair and the superintendent in coordination, and that is designed and identified in our policy BEDB. Um, the superintendent organizes the, and, and um, ensures that the, the business that is most pressing for the school committee is included in whatever the pending agendas are. And she and Amy discussed that, or the, she and the chair discussed that. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and other than that, I'll leave it be. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Thoughts about the process, anything? Member Johnson, we thought, go ahead. Um, well, I think that the, I think it was an excellence that we did this. Um, it has been part of our um, policy that we do it and it hasn't been done as long as I've known. <laughs> and I appreciated the work that the chair and the superintendent, whoever else was involved in working with MASK on on developing the tool and getting it out there. Um, and I think it does show some strengths, just there is a level of professionalism about our meetings and the agendas, the materials that go out, and people are very good about attending meetings and being here on time and all of that. Uh, there's, there was, I think, one really important thing where we, we seem to be in consensus that uh, some, some substantial work needs to be done, which is, uh, question 33, law and ethics, respect. 66.67% um, of us said, gave us the lowest level ranking for that. Uh, the description of that is underdeveloped committee members, underdeveloped committee members are critical of each other in public, both in and outside of meetings. The public does not view the committee as cohesive or able to reach decisions in a considered and deliberate manner. Um, so, and I will say I was one of those people who, who marked us that low and I did describe in my comments about having been yelled at and sworn at, um, publicly maligned, having members of the public write to me to uh, express concern for me after some of the comments that I've received. And I know I'm not alone in that. I know there's members of the public who also have had difficulty in communicating with different members and, and um, not being spoken to in a respectful manner. So I see that as a key element of where growth is needed. Um, I can't say for myself that I'm particularly hopeful that, that we will do that or that we can. I'm not sure. I, I guess I would be curious in um, getting some outside expertise and essentially evaluating whether the school committee is in a place of readiness for uh, taking on some of those issues and trying to improve. Um, so I, I noticed another area where we could improve was about having um, some of our agendas um, create opportunities for our own professional development, um, stepping outside of our normal business work to have discussions that can't necessarily happen in a um, in a Robert's Rules of Order kind of way, we can, you know, uh, we can do that. We can bring in people to work with us and uh, we can suspend our normal rules of order in order to have a, a workshop type format. So, but I guess I, I'm not, I'm not necessarily advocating that. I guess I would wanna do some preliminary work and see if there is readiness um, from us as a group to do some work on improving our respect for each other. Other comments, questions, thoughts? Member Deneve, go ahead. I just want to say that the process of self-evaluation is often very painful and hard to do, and I commend us for doing it. And um, I hope that it can only serve to clear air and make things more harmonious in the long term. 
here, here. Any other comments, questions, thoughts? I appreciate you all sharing. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I agree. The process, I think, is important. We'll learn from it. We'll learn from each other that way, too. Um, so thank you. And we will go on to the um, uh, item number 10, the MASC conference. Um, I'll, I'll set this one up a little bit. And anyone who knows more than me should just interject. <laughs> so we have a request from Member Denise to attend um, the MASC, MASS, which is the Mass Association of School Superintendents Joint Annual Conference, which is happening at the beginning of November in this year. Member Deneva is interested in attending. Um, and we have not a whole lot of precedent, not a whole lot of funding. Um, and there was an email exchange where I was not, when I was not really available to the committee that I've gone back and read through a little bit. And I've also spoken with some folks from the city about the budgeting around these things. So there is a city ordinance, which is kind of like you have something in the charter and you want to codify some details related to it and you create an ordinance and that stays on the books as well, and those are organized and documented. Um, and they're that, the same ordinance that gives city councilors and school committee members a $2,000 stipend per year also provides for $500 in funding um, for professional development for either city councilors or school committee members. Um, and so we know that that resource is there. And in order to have additional discussion I think what makes sense is for me to present a motion just to get the discussion started, and we'll go from there. Motions can be withdrawn, motions can be friendly amendment, amended, but based on what I have tried to get up to speed on related to this conversation and our lack of policy and precedent around conference attendance, here is my proposed motion. I move to authorize spending of city authorized professional development funds in the amount of $500 for member Deneve to attend the MASC MASS joint annual conference from November 2nd to 5th, 2022. Would anyone like to make that motion? Second, Johnson Musad. Okay, so I'll make it. <laughs> member Johnson Musad will second it. Oh, it's okay. okay. It's, it was confusing the way I introduced it. I like no it harm, coming no from you. That's good. <laughs> um, and let's discuss. Uh, Secretary Extra, <laughs> please. So you said there was two thousand dollars. No, the that that's this is the same ordinance that authorizes our two thousand dollars stipends as individual members that we get at the end of the calendar year. Right. Also, also authorizes say that five times fast. Also authorizes um, five hundred dollars per member. Okay. In professional development funds. So it isn't a. It's not. 2,500 total to attend something. It's 500 to attend something and- And then the $2,000 stipend is on its own schedule and it's a separate piece of, it's just in the same ordinance. Okay. I didn't mean to confuse the issue. It's okay. just where it comes from. That's okay, thank yeah. you. Sure, other questions and discussion? I'll just say, um, I think it's really good that we're having this discussion because I, I, I'm not sure even, on the city council that folks are really necessarily aware of this ordinance and I did try to raise it but I think the mayor at the time thought that um, this was not in the charter but it is so it's good to to kind of hear that um, and I, I think it also you know hopefully our self-evaluation will be a tool for improvement and if one of the things that uh, we need to do as a school committee is improve professional development opportunities I think it's wonderful that uh, member Denise could go and uh, come back and bring back some of the wonderful resources she'll be exposed to. Thank you. Member Denise. Um, I just was hoping to give a little backstory, especially to the people at home watching. I went down to the Division 5 meeting in Northampton, which is sort of the collection of all of the um, uh, school committee members and chairs from all over Western Massachusetts, and they're a very lovely group of people. Liz LaFond was there, and they immediately said, oh, you've got to go to Hyannis. We all go to Hyannis. This is how we learn what we need to do. 
And I said, well, I don't know anything about this. So um, I guess it comes to us every year, this information. And so they, they suggested that uh, Greenfield should start going to these things, but I don't know a lot about it. And I'm not even 100% sure that I have these dates available anymore. However, once I read about it and looked online, we do have a policy, BIBA, um, about maintaining a calendar of the professional development um, possibilities and then discussing it as a committee and figuring out if it makes sense for someone to go and how much it costs and also more importantly what do we want to get from it because there's a huge list it's it's like 50 workshops I couldn't take 50 works like there but there will be some that might be important specifically for the district so that's something we would have to identify as a group so there's sort of I think I was talking to Jean, and there's some steps to take to sort of maybe implement this. So maybe it's not this year. Maybe it's next year. Maybe it's not me. Maybe it's one of you. It's not really something that has to be decided at this moment, but I feel like this is something we should start the process on so that we can attend these and get the information and knowledge that we need that we can implement. So that's the backstory of why I've brought this up. Thank you. No, I. I don't disagree with any of that. I don't think any of us would disagree with any of that. We are clearly in a process of growth. And um, I, I will go back and review for my own education that policy. We may want to, policy committee, look at whether or not it addresses needs in terms of actual practical mm -hmm process for, for deciding who goes or mm -hmm. what have you. And I, I, I honestly don't remember that policy in any way, so I'm not going to speak to it at this point. Oh, yeah, um, I had to look it up. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. Um, and so we might involved and days involved. There's a lot involved in having somebody go out there, so it's worth starting the discussion, I thought. Yeah, and, you know, I'm well aware, too, that likely with something like this, three days in Hyannis, um, $500 is probably a drop in the bucket of what the actual expense would be. Um, and, you know, I would be interested, at least as a policy committee, discussing how to kind of be more proactive about what's reasonable budgeting, reasonable expenses for members to attend. Um, I do find it a little frustrating that so much of MASC's programming for school committees is in person. They've improved since the pandemic. Um, but before the pandemic, we could not do the, the training that we were just talking about under the self-evaluation. You couldn't do that except in person. So they've made some improvement. And I wish this stuff was a little more accessible remotely, but it is, it, it is what it is at this point. Um, you look like you want to say something. Please. Just a little more context to add to um, the conversation. So the school committee has contracted services as one of your budget lines. The only thing currently in that budget line that's paid for are the MASC dues. So, you know, that is a, an opportunity where professional development could be paid from. Um, Andy did say that he was not able to locate any request for professional development from the school committee um, since 2017. So the, the point of discussion about, you know, talking about doing ongoing PD, but I think if, I think if the committee is looking to embed this in your work, either the policy subcommittee might make a decision around how much, how frequent, or when I work with Andy and create the superintendent's budget, we can account for some opportunity for professional development in the contracted services line to be safe as we build the budget, and then you know, you folks can decide whatever you want, but we'll, it will be something that is um, accessible. But, for now, if anyone were to choose to go, it certainly could be paid for. I think the total, and Elizabeth, you can correct me, if <laughs> I think the total, if you participated in everything, mm. would be about 2,000, and that's the meals, the room, whatever still might be available. Um, so, I mean, there's a number of opportunities for um, networking, 
that are, you know, some dinners and um, receptions and things. So there are a lot of good opportunities. So um, that's, Thank that's you. my little piece. Thank you for that. Other discussion? Uh, I saw Member Wall first and then Member Martini, please. I think that professional development for the members of the school committee is an imperative expenditure. I'm not sure that one person going to Hyannis this year would accomplish what we need to do. I think we need to have a running list of things that are available for us to attend and have a discussion of what we need and who should go and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I, I have no objection to Elizabeth, go, member Denise going. <laughs> sorry, to Hyannis if, if that's what the committee thinks is an appropriate thing. But I do think that spending uh, funds to help us be better school committee members is a crucial thing for the future. Um, well, I wanted to say thank you to Member Denise for bringing this up as a thing because I do think that Greenfield School Committee should show its face at um, events on a regular basis that are sponsored and offered through MASK um, and resources like this. Um, I'm a little confused though about the funding. So um, the city charter has this piece in it about $500 per committee member or city councilor. Um, for purposes such as this, but Christine, you just said 2000, and I, could you please explain the funding source and how this works? Okay. My statement of 2000 is what the estimate would be if Member Deneve participated in all of the opportunities at the conference in Hyannis, it would be around 2000. Not to say that you were going to, but if if she were going to. Right. So that's where the 2000 came from. You had said that you thought it could be covered if so. Yes, if we have so funding. To it. In, so the district has funds available in professional development lines. The school committee has a contracted services line that has some funds available. So if you folks want to participate in professional development, unless it's you know a cruise to somewhere for all seven of you, which probably would be cost prohibitive. But you know certainly a, a few conferences or the MASC MASS conference for a member is something that could be covered. I did not do the research on the city ordinance. That would be something that the chair would have to. Speak I did to. that, and I did get from the city. Oh. We don't actually know, but we'll figure it out. So it, it's not something I don't think that city councilors are accessing that $500 on a regular basis either. Um, but it does appear from the ordinance that th the same process by which you're getting your stipend annually would exist for getting the $500 towards professional development. We haven't actually tried it out. But that's, that's, in theory, after discussing it with the folks on the city side, what, what would happen? So There'd be some sort of request to get it. OK. So, so say there was some professional development activity. The cost was $2,000. Some member is going to go do this. Um, then $500 of that is then reimbursed to that member or is paid to the school district, and the district is covering the rest? I'm just trying to understand the mechanism. Well, so I think we can approach it in a number of ways, and that's why we're having this discussion. We can say, as the original motion says, we're going to authorize the 500 that's already sitting there. I mean, we're not sure how it's sitting, but it, well, yeah, we're going to authorize that and say that's what we can contribute if you're interested in going. And then the rest would be out of pocket. Whether that's reasonable, that's not our discussion. That's what we could contribute. And what the superintendent is saying is there are other line items where we could have additional funds cover other pieces of it. And I think, you know, kind of the discussion around that, $2,000, okay, 
seems very reasonable for professional development for a conference for one member, um, where we sometimes get caught up as a school committee in spending public resources and prioritizing appropriately. You know, my the first thing that comes to mind for me is a lot of discussion recently around the cost of the pouches. We don't have to have too many people participate in professional development from the school committee it, it, to get to the point where we're spending as much as we spent on a year's worth of the pouches. So we need to figure out, and that's why I think policy discussion around it makes sense, to figure out where, what's reasonable for one person, what's reasonable for the whole school committee. Do we have a plan moving forward for having clearer process, clearer line items um, and budgets for professional development now that there's this snowballing of interest in doing it and doing it well? Does that help you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions, comments, discussion? Please, and then Member Deneef. Yeah, go ahead. Member Deneef and then the superintendent. Um, I was just thinking, Kate, you know, I don't know if you guys read the list of the, that particular event had many workshop, $50 workshop over here and a $60 workshop over here. I mean, humanly, you can't take them all. But as I was looking at it, I was thinking also in the spirit of harmony. Um, if somebody was particularly well versed in, in you know one area, like you know Susan's very great with finance, maybe she wants to take the finance workshop, and maybe you want to take a different workshop. People could go together. That can change the financial situation of it. It's not that you have to take every single class. So, right, something I, to. I think if you register for the entire three days, the fee is about 500 if you register right. by tomorrow, which is the early right, bird right. date, and then after that it goes up, something like that, but you could do piecemeal. I'm sorry, but that's right. really good timing, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think the early bird was done in July, July 15th, so I don't... Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know, I'm just chasing 15th. the paper that we were all sent, but... I, there are a number of workshops on there that sound highly valuable I know, that we could I know. use more um, expertise on, on this committee. I don't know, it's great Time we're is talking short. about it, so, yeah. Has anybody checked to see if any of these will be online in the future? I mean, I think that I did it, not. It, I oh, think that that would be something, too, that we need to find out if MASC and MA whatever the superintendent <laughs> one is. <laughs> there are some that are going to be broadcast online this year. In addition to in person, so if, yeah, I don't know what they Specifically are. Specifically from the annual conference, they're planning to do some of them online. Yeah. That's wonderful. They're planning okay. to do them simultaneously. But I think it would be great if we started, somebody started keeping up with that so that we as a group could say, why don't we all go to the how to be nice to each other one, and then we would have solved a problem. I was thinking that we should um, try some form of a pressure campaign to get them to do this sometimes in forgotten Western Mass. Amen. We're here. I actually did say that when Christine and I were discussing it, that of course it's on the Cape, so you can't drive back and forth. Yeah, my professional organization for my job, almost everything happens in Worcester, which is helpful to just about everybody except like Truro and Provincetown, um, and that yeah, I wish we would do more of that. So, but that's that's an aside. Uh, Christine, you had something you wanted to say? Just a question in terms of getting any baseline for what might be reasonable for professional development. Would the committee want me to do research with other districts that have seven member committees to see about what they budget and expend around this topic? That can't hurt. That's what I was thinking. That can't hurt, right? <laughs> Knowledge is power. And I, I guess I had forgotten this, but I did also mention to Christine that um, it does make sense to look at school committee professional development as part of the strategic planning process. I think it's important to have it appropriately prioritized and have an opportunity to discuss it in that format as well as here in a meeting or at the policy committee. Other, yes, Member Johnson-Musson. 
I guess I'm just asking for a tutorial in reading the budget. So, Christine, when you talk about the contracted services one, are you talking the one under central administration or? I see a school committee other expense for 13,000 um, that hasn't been spent. I don't know what that line is usually for. I think school committee other is actually your recording secretary. Uh, that is listed. Unless as there's a line uh, that says recording secretary. Yeah, You're ahead of me, that. Glenn. I, I, I need the budget. Sure. I can, um, in, instead of flipping through, I can get you the, I can email the committee with the budget lines okay. tomorrow what that is instead of. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Other questions, comments, discussion? The motion on the table is for the $500 for member Deneve to attend if she so chooses. Would anyone like to amend the motion? Okay, so I think we're ready to go to a vote. I guess I do have a question. Yeah, go Maybe ahead. Maybe I was mishearing, but are you still interested and available to, a, to go to this? Or? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, it doesn't hinge on that, I guess. I mean, just we want to just say, hey, we support it, even if it doesn't end up happening. I think that's an important exercise too. And if you do attend, would you need more than five hundred, or what would you need? I have no idea because my situation has changed a little bit okay. with my new job. So All right, maybe well. I cannot go. I do not know. <laughs> Can we revisit it in October? Yes, so of that course. We can, and then you would know what you need. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Earning her line item right there. Do you see that? <laughs> um, can we splurge and spend for the full full price if she wants to go and we don't know till? You can make that friendly amendment. Okay. I don't, I'm not opposed to that. I made the motion, right? It's a, yeah, I'm not opposed to that at all. I'm That's not opposed to it either. No, uh, wait, hold on. Let me, I don't have a problem with that. However, that money, that 500 is comes from the city. So we'd have to amend the motion to say two specific things. Yes. So uh, $500 as declared in the original motion and additional funding to cover the full cost up to $2,000 through school committee or other budget line items in, within district. And that was a horrible motion, which is why I try to write some it wasn't bad. ahead of time. Sorry, Susan Farber, do you have what you need? Okay. I, Anything further on that? Member Johnson, we saw, were you gonna say something? Just that I accept your friendly amendment to your own motion. <laughs> Thank you. Thank a you. second. Okay. Um, any, okay, anything else? I think we're ready to vote. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? So that passes unanimously. And that was a really good discussion. Thank you all. That, yeah, I think it's really important to move at this. And I don't, I don't know that we need a motion for this, but it does seem like it's an appropriate um, policy agenda item, as well as I'll make a note for strategic planning. It's an appropriate topic for strategic planning. Are you okay um, with that? I guess I'm not sure what the policy committee would do. We already have the policy on it. Maybe it's really a budget issue. Should we go to the budget committee? I'm not sure. Why we can have both look at it. I want to look at the policy and see if I would make any changes that make it more robust oh, or whatever. I don't know. I haven't looked at it. I'd really rather not revisit it. To be honest, I mean, I, if, the, if the committee wants to vote to send this to the policy committee, but we are not in the voting process. on anything. It was just a, a friendly suggestion. I don't want to put it on the agenda. Maybe okay. we'll, we'll put it on our wish list for someday, maybe. There you go. We're, all good. We're fine with that. And then if budget so chooses at their October meeting to discuss, and then I do, I do want to press and uh, Vice Chair Wells nodding her head, the strategic planning piece, where does this fit with what we're doing overall? So thank you all. Um, okay, and we're on to the help desk administrator job description. And I did check in with the superintendent uh, before the meeting and it sounds like there was a minor adjustment to what's in our packets, is that right? Yes, it, tiny on the um, job description. Joel, our new IT director, is from Canada, and he has some word choice 
that um, he included the word university degree preferred. So we're putting, you know, advanced degree, some college degree preferred. We'll have it that way. It doesn't need to be a university or a master's level degree, but some preference for formal um, post-secondary degree. So that was it, just. Okay. Uh, so a motion to approve the job description for a GPS help desk administrator as presented. Anyone? So moved. Member Johnson, we saw a second. Second. That uh, was Member Ekstrom. Any discussion? Is this, I have, uh, this is a brand new position. We haven't had this before. I assumed somebody Moving would want to Moving into the 21st century. <laughs> what, um, since Joel has been on board, he's been doing a lot of evaluation of our current setup and current situation. We did have an employee who was um, part of the IT department, generally stationed at the high school, who's not with us, and that position has not been filled. So really, this is a reallocation of an existing position, and based on what Joel has found to be the primary needs in the district, um, we have a lot of help tickets, and what's happening is the staff with different levels of skill are being pulled to spend a lot of time taking care of things that are help tickets that are really important but don't require, for example, the level of expertise of our network administrator who's dealing with a lot of help tickets. So by having someone right in the front available to staff more readily who can take care of the vast majority of the help tickets and get those out of rotation um, will, we hope, decrease frustration among our employees about needing access to technology resources and also be a first line of defense and potentially filter more advanced problems to the correct people. So Joel's intention is to really get some, whatever we can fix quickly, fixed quickly, and then um, filter things to the correct people within the department after that. So it's reallocating an existing staff person. Thank you for that. Uh, Secretary Ekstrom, go ahead. Um, so this is a person that you are hiring specifically, and the school committee does not hire, what, right, with all, and good intentions. Um, so it isn't necessary, necessarily necessary <laughs> that, we, that you would bring this to us, correct? The job description, school committee is voting on all new job descriptions. Okay. You won't need to vote on the appointment. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Let's move to a vote. Anyone opposed to the help desk administrator? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Anyone abstaining? It passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. And we've got our second reads, um, uh, item 12 and 13. Uh, th we'll, we'll do them, the sections on the handbook, I'm sorry, the policies uh, separately. Uh, do you agree? Yes. We can do, yeah, we can do them separately, yeah. Um, just to make sure there's nobody has anything. Um, so the first one is section E, support services. I'd like a motion to approve the second reading of Greensfield School Committee Policy Manual, section E, support services. Amy, as, sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Uh, Susan Farber asked that we have a consistent um, language that we use in making motions uh, to make it easier to identify in the notes when things have happened. So essentially I uh, got, um, I, I drafted some, shared them with the superintendent. They were vet, vetted by- Okay, do you uh, have it? Council and I have them. So. Please go ahead. I did not know. Go That's ahead. okay. Um, I move that we amend Greenfield School Committee Policy Section E Support Services as presented on second reading. I second. Any discussion or questions? I'm mostly looking for people who aren't on the policy subcommittee because we've already done it. Okay, I'm hearing none. I'm ready to move to a vote. Anyone abstaining from voting? Anyone voting no? Okay, so that passes unanimously. And we'll move on to the motion uh, from Member Johnson Musad for 
the facilities development section, please. I move that we amend Greenfield School Committee Policy Section F, Facilities Development, as presented on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Anyone abstaining? Anyone voting no? And that also passes unanimously for facilities development. That was quick and painless. Thank you all. Thank you to the policy subcommittee and specifically Member Johnson Musad as chair for all that good work and the superintendent for reading it all. Good to get it moving. Yeah. And Susan Farber for maintaining a spreadsheet of which policies are in which phase of development. Thank yes, you thank much. you all. It is it's a team effort for sure. Um, so our we our last item is any new business items from the committee for upcoming meetings, anything? Member Johnson, we saw it. I'm not sure if mine is a new business item or if it's something that will be included in the um, strategic planning, but it seems like if we want to make use of our self-evaluation, we will need to make a plan to address, I mean, we've talked about some of those things already, but will addressing some of the Greenfield School Committee self-evaluation results be part of our strategic planning? Will it be a document that's included and guide us and that we can use to say we want to make progress on some of these, you know? I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I think for me, what makes sense as a next step uh, would perhaps be to ask MASC because they actually developed the tool, administered it, but compiled the results perhaps ask them how they envision that tool being used and if they have resources for us. Um, certainly, I think our productivity as a body and how we work together should be a part of the strategic plan, but I think that those might be two separate things. Um, did you have a suggestion, ideas? Well, maybe we could have Mass come and talk to the committee about um how we can use this as a tool to improve. Sure. I'm gonna write down what you just said, use as a tool to improve. I'll check in with Liz if that seems agreeable as a starting point, yeah. Great, and if not, then I guess we could have a discussion together about next steps, um, if there are any items that we wanna address and how we wanna address them. Well, and certainly, I mean, I appreciate your interest around it. And, you know, certainly if they are not providing either a process or, you know, ongoing support um, for using the tool in a, in a development way, um, we could potentially look to having that addressed through some other assistance, whether it's, you know, a consultant or something else. I don't know what that is, but we could, I would want to look for some way to, uh, help us implement change. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you do an evaluation of students and you find that there's a lot of needs in one particular learning area, then you come up with a plan for how you're gonna improve those student outcomes. So we need to improve our school committee outcomes as well. Thank you for that. Um, other new business items? Okay, I'm not hearing any others. With that, because we do not have anything for executive session, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. Second. Any abstentions from that in a vote? Any no votes for adjourning? We are adjourned. Might be a record, people, 7.43 p.m. Thank you all. <laughs>